Hi. Welcome to the playlist on ketone bodies. Okay. So in this video, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at ketone bodies. Ketone bodies. And it turns out that there are three ketone bodies that we're going to look at. And these ketone bodies have special names. The first one is acetone. The second one we're going to look at is acetoacetate. So there's acetoacetate. And the third one we're going to look at is, let me draw that down here, is beta hydroxybutyrate. And these three molecules are ketone bodies. And ketone bodies tend to be produced by people who are not actively metabolizing glucose. And so that can result from, from several reasons. Number one, it can result from... Um, let's say you haven't intaken a lot of glucose in a while. So if you haven't intaken a lot of glucose in a while, your blood sugar is probably pretty low. And what you're going to end up, uh, first of all, you're going to end up undergoing beta oxidation. And if you, we've already done a playlist on beta oxidation, so you're going to be actively catabolizing fatty acids. But at the same time, you're going to be converting a lot of the acetyl-CoA you produce ultimately into ketone bodies. Ketone, and these are the three ketone bodies, acetone, uh, um, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate, okay? The other reason that they can be produced is not necessarily if you haven't intake in glucose, but maybe you can't get glucose into the cell. And this disorder is characteristic of diabetes. In the case of type 1 diabetes, the people, uh, they, just, they just don't make insulin. Uh, the, the, the synthesis is, is messed up in some way. In type 2, the, they have become insensitive to the insulin. So either way, um, they're not able to get glucose into the cell, and so they're going to act actively be catabolizing fatty acids, and they're going to be producing ketone bodies. Okay. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the biosynthesis of the ketone bodies. And it turns out that the initial synthesis is going to start with two molecules of acetyl-CoA. And the acetyl-CoA generally just comes from, um, ultimately, it's going to come from the catabolism of the fatty acid. Recall that when you're metabolizing fatty acids, you're producing a lot of acetyl-CoA. So ultimately, a lot of the acetyl-CoA that's generated goes into the production of ketone bodies. Okay, so we start with two acetyl-CoA. And the first reaction in here is a reaction that you should get to know pretty well. And it's catalyzed by an enzyme called thiolase. And certainly there are a lot of thiolases, but this particular thiolase, well, at least this thiolase is named for the reverse reaction. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Because this particular reaction is going to produce something called, it's going to produce something called acetoacetyl-CoA. Okay? So... The, the aceto group, this is essentially the aceto group right here. That's the aceto group. And the acet acetyl-CoA group is right here. So you get the name aceto-acetyl-CoA, right? And it's named for the reverse reaction, but, in the re but if we load the body up with acetyl-CoA, it's just Le Chatelier's principle, right? If I load the body up with acetyl-CoA and I'm not actively metabolizing glucose, what ends up happening is you put a CoA in, right? You, or excuse me, you don't put a CoA in, you actually lose a CoA in this direction. In this direction that you're running it, you actually lose a CoA, right? You lose a CoA, right? And when you lose that CoA, these two acetyl-CoAs condense into acetoacetyl-CoA. And of course, the reverse reaction is named, or this enzyme is named for the reverse reaction, because if you put in acetyl-CoA, right, what's going to happen, and let's, let's just look at the mechanism real quick, because we'll see this mechanism in the catabolism of it, but it's worth looking at right now, right? So essentially what's going to happen is this lone pair is going to do a nucleophilic attack. It's going to kick up the electrons, electrons kick back down, and this bond comes out and abstracts a proton. And so in the reverse direction, and this would of course be in the catabolism of the uh, ketone bodies, you'd end up with the two single coils. So this reaction is named for the reverse reaction, but in the reaction that we're doing it in biosynthesis, you end up losing a CoA and you produce acetoacetyl-CoA. Okay. The next reaction we're going to do is called HMG-CoA synthase. And HMG-CoA synthase is a fancy way of saying, and let me write it first, HMG-CoA synthase. 
And this is just a fancy way of saying something called hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A synthase. And what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to take acetyl-CoA, right? And it's also going to take a water molecule. You put it in, right? And you end up getting out coenzyme A. So what it's essentially going to do is it's going to transfer two carbons onto acetyl-acetyl-CoA. And this generates something called beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl coenzyme A. Hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A. Now, what we have to, to help you understand what this is, let's look at what a glutaryl CoA group is. Well, a glutarate, a glutarate is essentially a five carbon uh, dicarboxylate in which both carboxylates are on the terminal carbons. So what would that, so you, you, you've actually seen a glutarate, you've seen alpha ketoglutarate, that's a glutarate, but glutaryl CoA would look like this. So here is the coenzyme A, and I'll, I'll just draw five carbons. So here's one, two, three, four, five. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. So here's this. And if we label the carbons, right, so here's the alpha carbon, here's the beta carbon. So beta hydroxymethyl glutaryl CoA would look like this. So you got a methyl group and a hydroxyl group, and that's hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A. And it's catalyzed by HMG CoA synthase. And actually, this is an enzyme you should get to know pretty well because it turns out that this enzyme is actually um, important in the biosynthesis of cholesterol, and specifically the isoprene units that constitute cholesterol. And in fact, those isoprene units can go on to form um, things like ubiquinone, and we've looked at ubiquinone before. Um, or, or at least if you've watched the electron transport chain playlist, we've heard of ubiquinone. And um, HMGA CoA synthase is actually the rate limiting step in cholesterol biosynthesis. But, anyways, or it's at least the committed step. But, anyways, we generate HMG CoA. And the next enzyme that, that works here is called HMG CoA, hydroxymethyl glutaryl CoA, HMG CoA lyase. And essentially what this enzyme does is it kicks off CoA. It kicks off CoA, right? And we end up generating acetoacetate. We end up generating acetoacetate. And actually, let me actually come back here. It's actually not CoA that, excuse me, not CoA that it kicks off. It's actually acetyl-CoA, excuse me. It's actually acetyl-CoA. So we end up generating acetyl-CoA, and of course that gets consumed by citrate synthase combining with oxaloacetate and you end up producing citrate, right? But the lyase ends up producing something that looks like this, and it ends up producing acetoacetate. It ends up producing acetoacetate. Now, the acetoacetate that we produce, so this is, let me label it, this is acetoacetate. The acetoacetate has one of two fates. Either it can get decarboxylated, or it can it can be dehydrogenated or in, in, at least the dehydrogenation is is in, at least in this direction it's a reductase activity so let's look at the decarboxylation first and the enzyme that catalyzes this is called acetoacetate decarboxylase and you can imagine what it's going to produce essentially what's going to happen and let me let me go ahead and draw what you can think of the mechanism as essentially what's going to happen is this lone pair is going to kick in here and this uh, bond is going to come out and abstract a proton. So what you end up with is you end up with acetone. You end up with acetone. And what and essentially the acetone is, is, is actually what you smell on somebody's breath when they have not been metabolizing glucose. Because when you don't metabolize glucose down to acetyl-CoA, you end up producing a lot of ketone bodies. And actually here's just an interesting story to kind of illustrate the point. Um, when someone has acetone on their breath, like I mentioned, it, it means they're biosynthesizing a lot of ketone bodies. And I actually heard of a story one time where somebody went into a diabetic coma while they were driving a car. And they ended up crashing. And when the police officers got there, they smelled the person's breath. And it, and, and it turns out that acetone smells very similar to the smell of alcohol on someone's breath. So they arrested the guy and, and claimed that he was, uh, he was uh, in, a, in a drunk driving accident. But it turned out that he actually instead was he he was in a, he was uh, in diabetic ketoacidosis, and that's what we call it when you're producing a lot of ketone bodies. It's diabetic 
ketoacidosis. So he was producing a lot of acetone, and in fact, um, it was on his breath, so they thought he was driving drunk. And actually, another thing that's actually interesting about acetone is whenever you're sleeping, um, the metabolism of glucose goes down. So you end up, you, you don't produce, you're not, you're actually running out of glucose whenever you're sleeping. And actually, you actually start producing a lot of ketone bodies when you are uh, sleeping. And so when you wake up, sometimes uh, people will say you have morning breath. And the morning breath, it turns out, is due to production of acetone. But anyways, that's enough on acetone. So I'll go ahead and write this. This is acetone right here. Or we could call it 2 2 uh, 2 propanone. I mean, that would be the IUPAC name, but anyways, it's it's acetone. Or acetoacetate has another fate, and it can essentially be reduced, and in this case, we have to waste an NADH, which is not too terribly good. We have to waste an NADH. It produces NAD+, and we end up generating something called beta-hydroxybutyrate. So this is the last ketone body. We end up generating beta hydroxybutyrate, and specifically it's the D isomer. So this is the D isomer of beta hydroxybutyrate. And of course the chiral center is the one that has the hydroxyl group and the methyl group. But anyways, it's the D isomer and it generates beta hydroxybutyrate. Now it turns out that acetone doesn't get metabolized any further for the most part. It, it really just gets exhaled. And actually you can actually find these ketone bodies in the urine as well. Um, but the acetone doesn't get metabolized further. But as we'll see in the next video, it turns out that the, the beta-hydroxybutyrate can actually go on and be catabolized. It can go into ketone body catabolism. And actually, let me go ahead and say this. I didn't, I didn't mention this. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction right here, this is called acetoacetate dehydrogenase. It's called acetoacetate dehydrogenase. And actually, I might also mention it's an equilibrium reaction. Another name you could name it is beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. Some books will put that as well. But in the direction that we're running it in biosynthesis, it's going to waste an NADH. And it's essentially going to reduce this, this, this bond right here. It's going to reduce it from a ketone to a hydroxyl group. And we see that right here. So again, we'll, we'll mention, who is actively doing this? Well, it's actively being done by individuals who are not metabolizing glucose. So people that aren't metabolizing glucose tend to be biosynthesizing a lot of ketone bodies. And, and this is especially apparent in those individuals with diabetes, both one and two. So let's regroup. We start with two molecules of acetyl-CoA and we condense them with thiolase. Now, in catabolism, this reaction thiolase runs in the reverse direction. You actually end up putting in a CoA, as we saw, and it does a nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism, right? But um, in, in the direction in biosynthesis, it runs in where it, where it, 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 it kicks off a CoA. And we end up with acetoacetyl-CoA. And then we synthesize hydroxymethylglutaryl-CoA, and we mentioned that a glutarate group is essentially just a five carbon ter uh, diterminal carboxylate, right? And you've seen a you've seen a glutarate, you've seen alpha keto glutarate. So um, that's certainly a glutarate, and this and this is a basically hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A, and they're both both groups are at the beta position, right? And then it gets reacted with a lyase, and you end up producing acetyl CoA, and of course the acetyl CoA we'll mention this, goes into the TCA cycle, and it gets consumed by citrate synthase to form citrate. And the lyase ends up producing acetoacetate. Acetoacetate, and that has one of two fates. Either it can get dehydrogenated, or in, in this direction, it gets reduced by NADH to beta-hydroxybutyrate, or it gets decarboxylated to form acetone. And one thing I want to mention is that the decarboxylation is irreversible. So when you form acetone, it can't go back to form acetoacetate. And one thing that's also I'll, I'll mention here is that typically decarboxylases are irreversible. And so another thing is that carboxylases tend to be irreversible as well. So usually decarboxylases can't go either direction. So once you get rid of the CO2, 
um, you can't put it back on in the same way. If you, ha if you had to put it back on, it would have to be by an alternate enzyme, and that would be a, a carboxylase. So I hope this video helped, and in the next video, what we'll look at is the catabolism of ketone bodies. And one thing I do want to mention before, before we go into the next video and before we end this one is that the ketone body biosynthesis is done mostly by the liver. The liver is actually what synthesizes most of the ketone bodies, and um, and it turns out the key to, uh, the liver cannot actually catabolize them. And as we'll find, the ketone or the, the liver, excuse me, is missing one of the catabolic enzymes, and we'll see that in the next video. So I hope this video helped. See you in the next video.